Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So this is gonna be part two to things that you need to know before becoming a makeup artist. So if you're interested, just keep watching. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. So thanks for stopping by and as you can see by the title we're talking about things you need to know before you become a makeup artist so if you did not see the first video i will go ahead and link it in the description for you if you like this video please consider liking and subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you know every time that i drop a new video all right first thing that we're going to want to talk about is setting your rates and policies when setting your rates don't let anybody intimidate you or make you feel like your rates are outrageous or that they're too low because at the end of the day it's going to be your preference and you want to consider your experience level you want to consider the type of clientele that you service we talked about that in the first video in this one we're talking about setting those rates when i started out i started in a completely different state once i relocated to another state I had to reevaluate and adjust my prices. I had to see what are people charging in the area that I'm in, what are other makeup artists charging for what I do. You need to set your rates according to your quality, period. You know the type of quality that you give, you know the type of makeup artist that you are, and you know the type of clients that you want to service. You also want to set policies in place. You want to set a late policy. If you uh, require a deposit, you want to set a, a deposit policy. You need to write these policies and rates down. You also need to put a disclaimer that these are subject to change at any time. It's the summer of 2022 and everything has gone up because of inflation. So therefore, rates have to be adjusted. This is a job like anything else when you are a makeup artist. Do not let anybody tell you that it is not. People will try to make you feel like it is a hobby and you shouldn't be charging, and if so, you shouldn't be charging this much. You know what you're doing. You know the work that you put into it. You know the quality of your products and your services. So the next thing that you're gonna wanna do is apply for an EIN. If you are going to be a freelance makeup artist and you are going to run your own business your, and create your own makeup artistry, then you want to apply for an EIN. It is free, I will link the website right here where you can apply for an EIN. Now, keep in mind, applying for an EIN is not the same as creating an LLC or old proprietorship. It is not the formation of your business with your state. That is a separate process that you have to go through with, with fees that are associated. You will need to check your state's guidelines. However, this will enable you to create a business bank account and start to establish business credit. We'll talk about being a home-based business. I am a home-based makeup artist. So my studio is in my home. However, that may not work for everyone for a, a, a few reasons, but some of the major ones, make sure that it's okay for you to do this in your state. Some states, have stipulations that you need to adhere to in order to run a business out of your home. Also, you never want to put your personal residence. Don't want to put that information online. Never. The next major reason is safety. As a woman, as a business owner, as a entrepreneur, you always have to take these things into account because you do not have someone to do it for you unless you have that support. However, when I started, I was not married at the time and I did not have anyone that was necessarily looking out for my safety. It was very important to me that I was safe and not only that, but that my family was safe. Also, when you are traveling to service your clients, this is something that I, I, I've watched several uh, traveling makeup artists talk about things 
and they cover a lot of topics, but one that I didn't see was safety. It's definitely something that is important and it comes up. I would recommend be very professional. This is a business. You know, if you talking back and forth with Apple or with Amazon, you're not gonna be like, hey, what's up? Yeah, that's gonna be $20. Like, what? we're not doing business like that. Come on, see. Maintain your professionalism, but at the same time, be firm. Because people, especially scammers, people will try to intimidate you and get you to say something or do something in order for them to push their agenda. At this place in my business, I have a business phone number. So it's strictly for makeup artistry. So I don't use my personal cell phone. When you're first starting out, you're gonna probably do so. But something to keep in mind, and this is something that I did until I could afford to have a separate line exclusively for my business. I got a free number through Google Voice. So um, you can sign up for a Google Voice number. I won't go too much into detail because it's pretty self-explanatory. Pick your area code and you can pick your phone number and you can use it. People can leave voicemails, they can text you and you can call and they can call you. Okay, you can set up a personalized voicemail message as well and check the messages. And you can check them from a smartphone or any other device. The phone numbers will be filtered so that when you call, they will see that Google Voice number and not your personal cell phone number. Now, I don't make promises and I don't make guarantees because some people will try to get over on you. At the end of the day, people is still gonna be people. So, that's my way of saying, hey, what's your budget? Let me see if I can help you. If I cannot, then I will tell you. There's been times where that has happened and it's okay to say, no, I'm sorry, I cannot do that. But I hope that you'll consider me in the future. That's exactly how I word it. If they cannot afford you, that's okay. That's okay. You don't have to lower your rates. You don't have to waive fees. You don't have to do things that you do not want to do. No, that's it. The next thing that you wanna do is create a professional website and a social media page. If you can't do a website, start with a social media page. I started with creating an Instagram page. From there, I created a Facebook page um, and the two you know, work hand in hand with each other because uh, Facebook owns Instagram. I use Canva. I love Canva. Okay, use Canva. It's uh, like $12.99 a month for the membership, the paid membership. I believe they'll give you like a free trial or there's a free version, but uh, you get everything with the paid version for the $12.99 a month. I've used it to create cards, logos, um, flyers, um, social media posts, YouTube stuff, all of that on Canva. So me and Canva are best friends. The next thing that you want to do, get out there and tell people about your business. Seems very simple and uh, obvious. However, I am a terrible salesperson, so I had a hard time walking up to complete strangers and then telling them like, hey, I offer a service. I'm a makeup artist here, you know, in this area, take my card or take my number, whatever. Um, just seemed intrusive and um, just like it could be a little annoying to some people. So I have a hard time doing that. I went to a store the other day with my daughter and this uh, the cashier said, oh my gosh, your makeup is so pretty. I said, thank you, so it's yours. And she said that she was just starting out and that she likes the type of makeup that I'm wearing that she's thinking about trying something like that. It's something that she's not used to. Their organic opportunity for me to say, well, you know, I have a YouTube channel that you can check out with tutorials. And if you wanna try something like this, I have a video up or I'm gonna post a video. And I'm a local makeup artist. So if you want me to try it out on you, say you're going somewhere or something, or you just wanna have a little beauty day, a, a session, 
come on over girl or i could come to you what have you and uh let's get it popping so these are things to keep in mind because at the end of the day you're going to be your first marketing team before you can afford all of the lights and glitter and gold you're going to start out by being your marketing team so you need to come up with a strategy and just having social media that won't do it your business is not going to thrive solely on social media you're we work in a business where it's service-based so you have to actually provide the service with that being said that leaves an easy transition to providing excellent customer service i have a background in customer service so i use that to my advantage when i am working my own business if you do not have customer service experience that's okay that's totally okay you can learn it and you can offer it with very little training <laughs> okay people think that because you're a makeup artist and that means that you're a people person not always so um, it's definitely something that you can learn and it's definitely something that we can talk about let me know if y'all want me to make a video about that I would be happy to the last thing that I want to talk about in this video is building a freelance makeup artist kit, okay? A professional makeup artist kit. I can tell you that it costs money to build a kit. However, it doesn't have to break you, okay? Here's some tips. One, check out Amazon, okay? Amazon, unless if you already have Prime, even better because it's going to get to you quick. Okay, check out Amazon, create a list, all right? You can create that list and it can be public or it can be private. If you create a public one, you can share that list with family and friends and people who just wanna support your business. And let's say you don't have people giving you a bunch of money, but they wanna ask you like, man, uh, this is tight that, you know, you're starting your own business. This is, that's super dope. I wanna, how can I help? What can I do? And you you know instead of telling them like give me fifteen thousand dollars you know you can tell them hey check out my amazon list and they can purchase things that you need makeup artist supplies um bags all of my travel bags that i've had and i i did a video about this but um which i'll also link in the description box but um all of my travel bags and and things that I have, all of my organization um, supplies that I use when I travel somewhere, and I got them from Amazon. So they have great uh, makeup artist supplies and pricing. AliExpress or Alibaba, I think it's called. Uh, I think there's both, but you know, either one. Now, granted, a lot of people don't really wanna mess with AliExpress or Alibaba because that stuff be coming from China. But some things, it's okay. If it's something that you don't need right away and it's something that you need in bulk, I would recommend AliExpress. Um, if you want to look for things that are branded with your logo, with your name, with even the word makeup artist on it, Etsy, Etsy. I got a makeup artist apron from there and it says makeup artist and it says at J Paints on the front. I will link a, a picture over here. I'll put it over there. See it? Okay, so I got that from Etsy. Also, my business cards, I got them off of Zazzle.com. Zazzle. Zazzle always has really good deals, so I love, love, love them. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for staying here. So, I mean, if there's some more stuff that you, you guys want me to talk about or you have some questions, leave me a comment so that I can address them and do another video. But that's all I have for now. I gotta go. I've taken up enough of your time. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I love you. I'll see you in the next video.